In December 2014, the Victorian Ombudsman, Deborah Glass, started an investigation into the reporting of abuse of people with disability in Victoria. This was in response to concern in the community, the disability sector and the media. On the 25th of June 2015, the Ombudsman tabled a report on her investigation. There are two phases to this investigation. Phase 1 is focused on the effectiveness of statutory oversight and this report covers this. The Phase 2 report is expected later in 2015 and will look in more depth at the process for reporting and investigating abuse, drawing on individual experiences. The following agencies are included in the scope of this investigation. The Department of Health and Human Services, the Disability Services Commissioner, the Office of the Senior Practitioner, the Office of the Public Advocate and Community Visitors, Authorised Officers and the Transport Accident Commission and WorkSafe. Some agencies and services were outside the scope of this investigation, including agencies responsible for managing children with disability under the Child Protection Program, Victorian Education Facilities, Service Providers Working Under the Mental Health Act, the Home and Community Care Program. Because the Ombudsman does not have jurisdiction over Victoria Police, the investigation did not look at how Victoria Police deals with reports of abuse of people with disability. This report addresses a number of issues relevant to the introduction of the National Disability Insurance Scheme, including developing a robust quality and safeguarding framework for the scheme. The timing and scope of the investigation were also influenced by relevant Victorian Parliament and Commonwealth Senate inquiries. See the committee's websites for more information. The investigation found a number of serious issues in statutory oversight, including no single source of reliable data to understand the extent of the problem, complex fragmented and confusing oversight arrangements, and inadequate advocacy for people with disability. There is no single source of reliable information to understand the extent of the problem. There is also no common definition of abuse used in the sector. This makes it hard to know what behaviours are abuse and should be reported. Many people with disability will not report abuse for reasons including fear that they won't be believed, fear of repercussions or that no action will be taken, a lack of capacity or ability to tell someone, or not having a trusted person to tell. Mandatory reporting of all abuse or suspected abuse based on a commonly understood definition would help address these obstacles for people with disability. New South Wales has this approach. The current oversight arrangements are complex, fragmented and confusing. There is no single oversight body to receive abuse allegations and incident reports, review incidents, report on deficiencies or address systemic issues to prevent abuse. There's a conflict of interest for the department in being both a service provider, a funder of services and a regulator. There are also gaps in the existing oversight arrangements. The Disability Services Commissioner and the Office of the Public Advocate have specific but limited roles. The Disability Services Commissioner can take complaints and review some incident reports, however he has no powers of his own volition. The Office of the Public Advocate can report abuse to the Department through its guardianship and advocacy roles and through the Community Visitors Program, but it has no investigative powers. These roles, as they currently stand, result in a lack of ownership in addressing reports of abuse. There is also a lack of information sharing, either because agencies are reluctant to or because they can't under their legislation. This diagram shows the many things that can happen when an incident of abuse is reported. It paints a complex picture of the current arrangements. There is a critical role for advocates to assist people with disability, especially those who can't communicate or don't have the ability to make a complaint themselves. Currently, there is no clear understanding of the demand for advocacy. 
As a result of phase one of this investigation, the Ombudsman made two key recommendations. The first is, in considering the findings of this report, in particular the lack of consistent mandatory reporting, complex oversight arrangements and gaps in oversight, the Ombudsman recommended that the government either establish or transfer responsibility to an existing agency for a single independent oversight body. It should have the clear jurisdiction, powers and independence to address reports of serious incidents and it must be easy to make a complaint to. Its functions should include receiving mandatory reports of all serious incidents from all service providers, receiving voluntary reports of abuse or quality of care concerns, liaising with police on investigations, investigating complaints, referring matters to other bodies, reviewing all incident reports to identify improvements, promoting awareness and education, reporting on trends and good practice complaint handling examples, sharing information with other bodies and a disability worker exclusion scheme. This body could become part of, inform or eventually be replaced by a national quality framework which ensures Victorians with disability are not provided with less protection under a national scheme. The Ombudsman also recommended that the Victorian Parliament Family and Community Development Committee further examine the logistics of such a body as it considers ways to strengthen the system prior to the introduction of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. The second recommendation is that the Government undertake a comprehensive assessment of the advocacy needs of people with disability and transfer funding and responsibility for administering all advocacy services to the Office of the Public Advocate, including ensuring access to advocates to assist people with disability to report allegations of abuse and to support them through the process, and providing oversight for advocacy services to ensure consistency and best practice. This would provide consistent service, prioritisation according to need and oversight. In summary, this report recommends that a safer system for people with disability in Victoria requires consistent and robust oversight from a single independent body and a strong system of advocacy to ensure that those who need support to speak up when something's not right can access that support.